It's been over three years since we first heard the title The Acolyte, and today we finally got the trailer for the very first live-action Star Wars story that takes place outside of the Skywalker saga. Not only that, but yesterday gave us the first awesome poster, today we got another one, and StarWars.com put out an interview with series creator Leslie Headland and updated its data bank with information on some of the new characters. So today we're focusing on breaking down that trailer, but I'll also include all those new details. First, let me just say that I I am relieved that we're going to see months worth of marketing for this series. It doesn't premiere until June, so I expect we're going to get more trailers and TV spots in April and May. I think that's smart because, like I said, this is a big deal for Star Wars. I've been reading books and playing video games that take place all over the Star Wars timeline for decades now, but for fans who have only watched the live-action stuff, they've never ventured outside of the same 60 years or so that encompassed the Skywalker saga. I'm glad Lucasfilm is going to take some extra time to set the stage for this era. Specifically, we'll be in the High Republic era, which takes place about 5 to 100 years before the events of the prequel trilogy. It's a time when the Jedi and the Republic are at their height of power and idealism. The era has been established in some fantastic books and comics, but don't worry, Leslie Headland says, you don't need to know too much to enter the story. It's not like those books are required reading, but I can already say that the series looks like it'll be rewarding for those that have read them. If you want to learn Learn more about that era, I've done an introduction for its connections into Star Wars Jedi Survivor, but the information is still relevant. But okay, let's get into the trailer itself. We start out, I believe, on Coruscant, with Jedi Master Sol teaching a bunch of younglings. Sol is described as a wise, highly respected, powerful Jedi Master, strong in the ways of the Force, who is going through emotional conflict. That conflict is likely rooted in Amanda Stenberg's character, May, because the official synopsis for the series says, In the Acolyte, an investigation into a shocking crime spree pits a respected Jedi Master against a dangerous warrior from his past. May is simply described as someone who gets swept up into a sinister mystery one that puts her into the center of a conflict in unexpected ways. We see her walking through a village and a market as Sol talks the younglings through meditation, telling them not to trust their eyes, similar to what Obi-Wan tells Luke in A New Hope. But one child says they see fire when they close their eyes. I'm gonna make a guess that little girl is May, and this moment is a flashback, because an earlier synopsis for the series said, A former Padawan reunites with her Jedi Master to investigate a series of crimes, but the forces they confront are more sinister than they ever anticipated. So May is not only a dangerous warrior, but maybe Sol's former student. And maybe she had visions of fire as a youngling that eventually came true. May approaches Carrie Ann Moss's Jedi character in Dara. All we know about her is that she is a Jedi Master of great physical and mental skill. Thanks, StarWars.com, that's very helpful. May attacks in Dara, and the small bit of the fight we got to see is awesome. This moment is what I remembered most strongly after seeing the footage at Star Wars Celebration last year. The mix between Kung Fu and the Force. The feet skidding on the floor after a Force push. Just awesome. Awesome. And by the way, this is a different trailer from what we saw at Celebration. The first half up until this fight was very similar, but the second half was almost entirely new, including the setup that the shocking crime spree is a series of murdered Jedi. And it sure looks like we see Mei attacking her second Jedi. They're setting us up to believe she is the villain here, but I think there's probably more to it, if she's going to wind up joining forces with Sol. A Jedi character named Yord says the murders don't make sense. StarWars.com says Yord, a Jedi Knight and Guardian from the Jedi Temple, is an overachiever and a rule follower. His need to be a by-the-book Jedi can cloud his mind. Okay, I love that. First of all, Yord looks awesome, but as a rule follower, I can relate to him. But also, he will certainly be challenged on this journey. Leslie Headland's interview says the Acolyte has a darker tone focusing on the duality that exists beyond the simplistic black and white view of good versus evil. Yord sounds like he might be the kind of Jedi that won't be able to see the gray. Alongside him is another Jedi named Jeki. She is the Padawan apprentice to Master Soul. Although she is young, she projects calm and conducts herself with maturity. I also think that's great. If Mei is like a failed apprentice of Souls that left the Order, she will probably butt heads with Jeki, the new star pupil. And as a side note, I love how many aliens we see in this trailer. Like I said, this is going to have a darker tone, so I think people will be comparing it to Andor, and I love Andor to death, but I would agree it 
mostly shied away from the pulpier, weirder side of Star Wars. Here it seems like it's being embraced, not just in background characters, but in one of its main characters. Actually make that two main characters, because next up is a shot of Kel Naka, a Wookiee Jedi that StarWars.com says is a loner who lives a solitary life. It's great that he's played by Jonas Suatomo, who played Chewbacca in the sequel trilogy and Solo A Star Wars Story. It's also interesting for a Wookiee to be out on his own. Chewbacca was based on George Lucas's dog. We tend to view Wookiees as social creatures, as loyal best friends, but Kelnaka won't be a typical Wookiee. He's reminding me of someone who retired and went off to be alone, but gets pulled into one final job. We get to see some shots of Sol using the Force to mind trick someone or calm them down, or both, and then he confronts Mei in a fight. I do think there is some recognition in their eyes, like Mei wasn't expecting to see him. There's a shot of Vernestra Rowe, a Miri Allen Jedi, opening a door in what I think is the Jedi Temple. We can also see her in the background of one of the shots with the younglings, so if my flashback theory is correct, this might take place before the main events of the series. Vernestra has a more substantial entry on StarWars.com because she is a major character in the High Republic books. There we see her as a 15-year-old Jedi Knight, having been promoted at a very young age. Headland says to expect a changed version of the character in the Acolyte, saying, she's very rarely in the mission robes, adventuring, and dreaming. I think as the show goes on, you'll understand why. She's seen so much, and she is so in tune and in love with the Force. Here, she's more of a high-ranking official. The other Jedi revere her. It'll have been a couple hundred years or so since the books and comics take place, so I can accept that Vernestra would have changed. Heck, she is changing in the books and comics right now. There's one shot of the character Kamir, who is said to be a former smuggler now making his living as a trader, procuring unusual things and enjoying a life of leisure. Procuring unusual things still gives off a smuggler vibe to me. I wonder if he could have a connection to Sith or Jedi artifacts or something. He could be useful to the Jedi on their quest. Next is a shot of Sol, Indara, Kelnaka, and another Jedi at night on some world. Their robes are more gold than we've seen in other shots, and Sol and Indara's haircuts are different. I wonder if this is another flashback. Maybe this is a time when Mei was actively Sol's Padawan, giving her a connection to Indara and Kelnaka as well. Maybe something bad happens on this mission that could be the reason Kelnaka goes off on his own. We see a couple shots of a very mysterious new character named Mother Anisea. She is the leader of a coven of witches who value their independence and preservation of their beliefs and powers. She has the line, This isn't about good or bad, this is about power and who is allowed to use it. I could see her butting heads with the Jedi. Centuries earlier, the Jedi seemed happier to work with other Force users, sitting in on the convocation of the Force on Jedha. But that didn't go so great, so they might be more hesitant to work with anyone who isn't a Jedi, especially a bunch of witches. There's a quick shot of a girl running through some burning woods. I might be way too deep in my flashback theories, but I think that could be May. This could be the vision of fire the youngling saw. This could be her leaving the Jedi, or maybe it's from her time on her own. We still don't know who the titular acolyte is. It could be her. I think it probably is. We see her staring at a cloaked figure, so maybe she meets one of the hidden Sith after leaving the Jedi Order. It does look like we might see a Sith in the flesh, or at least someone who wields a red lightsaber and they kick a bunch of Jedi butt in just one shot. I was not expecting that. It could very well be just some dark side user with a red blade, but I would lean more towards Sith right now. The question is, if a bunch of Jedi run into a Sith Lord, how does that line up with the Jedi thinking the Sith have been extinct for a thousand years in the Phantom Menace? Maybe the Sith kills all the Jedi and there aren't any witnesses, or maybe the Jedi decide to just keep their mouths shut. I actually think that makes a lot of sense. In the High Republic books, there are creatures deadly to the Jedi called the Nameless. Several Jedi encounter them, and then decide to just not talk about what they saw. They cover it up, and it causes problems later. I could see something similar happening. A few well-respected Jedi don't want to cause a panic, so they just bury the problem. So in The Phantom Menace, Kiati Mundi and Mace Windu truly do think the Sith have been extinct for a thousand years, and then Yoda might be sitting there crossing his fingers, knowing there is a chance they might be wrong.
Speaking of, I'm kinda surprised we didn't see Yoda. I'm happy about it because I love how fresh the Acolyte feels. I do think there's a chance we might get a scene in the Jedi Council with Yoda, Apo Rancisis, Jarl Poof, Yaddle, and Terra Sinube where they tell Sol to investigate the murders or something. I am fine with that, I just hope the focus remains on these new faces. And that's basically it for the trailer, but I want to jump back to point out all the shots of various planets. Lots of different environments, forests, snow, cities, rocks, and ruins. I love the variety. I could see the clues unraveling, and each episode takes us to a new planet. That would be a cool structure. I'm so psyched for the mystery thriller genre as well. A cat and mouse game between Jedi and Sith sounds excellent. We do know there will be eight total episodes, with a two-episode premiere on June 4th. Leslie Headland directed the first two, and if you haven't read her interview, check it out. I'll link to it in the description. She has a lot of passion for Star Wars, including the EU, which she grew up on. She says, There's some EU lore that I decided to put in because I thought it was so cool, and no one told me I couldn't. There are a couple of really big EU ideas that are utilized both early on in the series and later in the series. Yes, bring it on. I love that the Acolyte could connect not only to the High Republic era, but maybe the Old Republic era as well. But that's all I've got to say about the Acolyte trailer for now. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments, and keep an eye out later today because we're going to try to do a live stream about the trailer just to keep the fun going. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to keep up with all our Acolyte coverage, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.